Update I, 15M. Think my dad, 38M, has a boyfriend? I think he is gay. How do I support him? This actually happened like two weeks ago, but I don't need advice. I don't think so. I didn't post anything. But then I remembered some of you seemed kind of invested in my dad's love life. LOL, so here we go. I was thinking a lot about everything with my dad and how to talk to him and how to deal with the way I feel about everything without making my dad feel bad or like I'm the main character and he has to do what I want or anything. And I guess I was acting weird because my dad asked me if I was okay and I said that he wasn't wearing his wedding ring anymore. So he asked me if that upset me and I said kinda because it wasn't like he just took it off when my mom died and he wasn't married anymore. He kept wearing it then but then he took it off now, so he feels different now, I guess, and I was afraid he didn't care anymore. Because I don't want him to be sad all the time anymore. But I do kind of want him to still be a little sad, maybe. Which I know isn't cool of me, but I'm still a little sad. Then my dad got quiet for a while, and then he apologized that he'd made me feel like he didn't care about my mom anymore. And that he'd been handling things badly since she died. He said that he still loves my mom and everything, but that he loved her different now. And he had been acting like it was the same, which was why he was sad all the time. But then he accepted that even though he still loved her, and she was still his wife, it was different. And he felt better, but then looking at his wedding ring made him really upset. IDK, he explained it really well, but I think it sounds dumb the way I wrote it. But it made sense when he said it, because like, she's still my mom, and I still love her. But obviously, she's not my mom the way she was when she was there all the time. Then he asked me if I wanted their wedding rings. He said he'd been holding on to my mom's for me when I got older, and he figured I was old enough now to be responsible with it and not lose it. So we got a chain for me to put them on, and I wear both their wedding rings around my neck now. Anyway, since we were talking about it, I wanted to say something about how my dad is dating Peter. I know some of you said that maybe they were just friends, but if you were in my house and you saw the way my dad talks about him, you would not think that I haven't spent a lot of time with Peter or anything. But I have been around him and my dad together, and they are not just friends, lol. So I told my dad that I wouldn't be mad or upset if he dated someone else. It would be okay, he shouldn't be alone forever. And he said it meant a lot that I said that. Then I said that Peter seems pretty cool, and my dad got all awkward, not in a you are so wrong way, in a I'm embarrassed to talk about my boyfriend way. And it was funny for a bit, but then I felt kind of bad lol, so I said Peter's old man sweaters aren't cool but that at least they're better than my dad's dumb polo shirts, which I said mostly to change the vibe, but also because it's true, and my dad called me a brat, then hugged me and said I was a good kid and we moved on. So we didn't really talk about it, I guess, but I know they're dating, and he knows I know they're dating, and I'm cool with it. And I still feel a little weird about my dad dating someone who isn't my mom, but I feel better about it. Not sure if anyone is reading this, but if you are, I hope you liked it, hello, my wife, 35OF of 10 years, thinks my parents, 65F and 70M, don't want to make an effort to see our son. My parents think my wife doesn't want them to see their grandchild. They are both wrong. How do I intervene to fix it? TLDR. My wife doesn't want to see my parents and my parents don't want to talk to her. My child is the only one losing from this feud and I don't know how to fix it. My wife, 35F of 10 years, thinks my parents, 65F and 70M don't want to make an effort to see our LO, 3M. My parents think my wife doesn't want them to see their grandchild. They are both wrong. What do I do? In simple terms, my parents, 60s, and my wife, 35F, have different ways of communicating and similar expectations that the other party should be the one to initiate interactions. I was away in a different country for four months for work and asked my parents to look after my wife and child. They texted and called her at the beginning, but stopped suddenly. While I was away, I didn't ask either party whether they were in contact with each other because I wanted my parents to foster a relationship with my wife that wasn't going through me, if that makes sense. I only knew that my wife went to visit once, a few weeks after I left. When I finally got back, my wife was upset with my parents because they stopped calling, and she felt they didn't care to see our child. She showed me the texts and call logs, and from her perspective, it seems she is absolutely right. That made me feel upset with my parents too. I went to see my parents and confronted them about that. They said they felt my wife didn't want them to see their grandchild because they made plans twice and she canceled. That is not really fair, as one, she went to visit once, although they complained it was a short visit. Two, 
She canceled once as our child was ill. I knew about this, but they were not aware of the reason. Three, the second time that she canceled, she actually asked to reschedule for dinner instead of breakfast because they had a tough night, you know, taking care of a toddler. My parents had plans for dinner, and instead of suggesting another day, that is when they stopped communicating because they didn't want to keep getting shut down. I heard them out, and from their point of view, it seems they are right. I can see both of them are in the wrong in this case. I don't know how to fix it, though. My parents are super stubborn, and they don't want to call my wife anymore because they have learned their lesson that they are not wanted. My wife is really hurt and doesn't want us to go visit or have them over yet until she feels more comfortable. If I have to take sides, I 100% support my wife. Normally, I would feel this is a minor disagreement that would be diluted with interaction at other family gatherings with my siblings or aunts, for example, with whom my wife has zero issues. However, we are moving far away in less than a month and we are not coming back until Christmas. My parents will not be able to travel to visit us before then. I really want my child to have a chance to see grandparents while they are with us, so I am anxious to get together. At the same time, I understand, respect, and support my wife's feelings, and I don't want to push for a visit if she is not comfortable. I don't like the idea of meeting them without child, but without my wife, as I would feel anxious if roles were reversed. I also want to leave in relatively good terms with family thinking that we normally spend Christmas together. My wife's family and mine get together at my parents, since mine is the bigger side of the family. How do I fix this? How long do I wait for things to cool down? When do I know it's the right time to bring everyone together, and how do I approach it? Husband making me feel crazy. So here's a rundown of my situation. My husband, 34M, and I, 34F, have been married seven years. At the beginning of the relationship, we had the usual conversations about previous exes and what all went down. He has this ex, I'll call her Kelsey. They only dated briefly, less than a year, and it ended pretty badly. Early on in our relationship, I realized that Kelsey would email my husband, which initially I didn't have an issue with. He claimed she was crazy and would reach out here and there for attention. Shortly after we got married, he gave her his phone number and tried to hide their conversations by saving her number in his phone under a made-up male name. They began making plans to meet up for lunch. But at that point, they hadn't followed through with it. I confronted him, and he admitted he was wrong for trying to hide it, and told me it was nothing to worry about. About a year later, I got pregnant with our first child, a planned pregnancy. He was working at a new job and made plans to go out for an after-work event one evening with his new co-workers. I stayed home as I couldn't drink, and also, he didn't invite me. Around 10, he texted and asked if I minded if he stayed out for a while longer, as he was having fun with his co-workers. I had no objection but thought it was odd. My gut instinct told me to check our joint account, so I did. Lo and behold, there was a recent charge for a movie theater, which was just the right amount for two movie tickets. I got in my car and drove over to the theater to find his car parked there with a woman's purse in the passenger seat. I texted him with a picture of it, demanding to know who he was with. To my surprise, he was with Kelsey. He refused to come out and talk with me, and just kept telling me to go home and we would talk later. I eventually left and he didn't come home until 5 a.m. I asked him what he did that whole time, and he stated that they just hung out. He was with her for nostalgia and nothing else. He claims it wasn't romantic at all. Seeing as we were having a baby in just a few short months, I decided to try and move past it and accept what he was telling me. I fell into a deep postpartum depression, which I believe was largely influenced by this and my broken trust in him. After our son was born, we moved out of state and changed our phone numbers with the intent of cutting any and all ties. That worked for a bit, but about two years after we moved, Kelsey resurfaced. I could feel my husband pulling away and I kept asking him if he had heard from her again, which he repeatedly told me he had not. I couldn't shake the feeling that he was lying, so one, Day when he left his work computer unlocked and unattended, I opened his email and found that they had been talking for the past five months via email and a few phone calls. When I confronted him, I told him that we either go to counseling or I am leaving. He agreed to counseling, which we have been doing, and it seems to be helping. But to this day, he claims that he hasn't cheated and that I am mentally ill for not being able to let it go. 
I recently found that he had paid for Uma, a virtual phone, to be able to hide the calls from me. But I am expected to believe that this is all platonic? Am I crazy for feeling re-traumatized by all of this lying? And am I wrong for believing that he cheated at least emotionally, if not physically? Sorry for the long post. Thank you in advance for reading and responding. Edit, I have read each and every response. Thank you, everyone. I think this is the end of my marriage. Now I need to get my ducks in a row. I'm currently a stay-at-home mom, so my son and I are completely financially dependent on him. Am I the entitled person? I had to fly to San Diego for work last week at 30-ish weeks pregnant. Bear with me. I know Reddit hates pregnant people, but I really think I handled this one the right way. I was flying American Airlines, and when you book your flight, you pick your seat. I booked a few weeks in advance and chose a seat that was towards the middle of the plane, closest to the bathroom, and I selected an aisle seat. I paid $1.78 for my seat because it's considered a premium seat due to legroom. My return flight was a red eye, and as I waited at the airport to check the seats for any closer to the restroom, I noticed that the row I selected, as well as the one directly across, were mostly empty. Great. I don't mind getting up to move for others on a flight. I usually would take the window seat, but due to being so far into pregnancy, I was advised by my OB to get up every 1-2 HRs and walk around to avoid the risk of blood clots. She also wanted me to drink a lot of water on the flight, hence the proximity to the bathroom. Because of this, I booked an aisle seat, partially for convenience, but also so I wouldn't have to bother or potentially wake sleeping passengers on an 8-H or red eye every 1-2 HRs to walk around or pee. Like I said, I paid a fee for this assigned seat. So boarding happens, and I see that the flight has filled out a bit, and now there are no empty seats in either row. No issue, I've made the necessary accommodations, and I'm not relying on empty seats on anyone else to do any type of switch, so this doesn't impact me at all. If people need to get up and move, great, a reminder for me to get some steps in. I'm sitting in my seat and the woman who will be taking the window seat boards, and we chat a bit, and she says not to worry, she won't be a bother getting up and down as she plans to sleep, and I tell her not to worry if she needs to get up, she won't be bothering me, and tell her I have to get up to walk anyway. Towards the end of boarding, a very, very tall man comes and he's in the aisle helping a woman who is in the aisle seat next to mine, but like across the aisle, if that makes sense, to put her bag in the overhead bin. At this point, I have my AirPods in, but I'm on alert as I'm aware there is someone in the middle seat and I'll have to get up and let them in. It becomes apparent that this man has the middle seat in my row while his wife has the aisle seat next to mine. So I am s and nicely sat right between them. I pull out my headphone and offer to switch aisle seats so they can sit next to one another. There is a bit of a language barrier, and she gestures next to her at a boy, maybe 8, 10 years old, and says, This is her son, and she doesn't want to leave him alone in the row. So I nod and say, Okay, totally makes sense, and stand to let her husband jog into the middle seat. Here's where I was called entitled. The man asked for me to switch with him so he can sit next to his wife. Thinking maybe it didn't register to him that I am pregnant, I jokingly gestured to my very obvious bump and explained the bathroom and the frequent walks. He says he doesn't mind, he will get up. I said, no, I'm sorry, I paid for the aisle seat so that I would be able to get up and move freely as needed during the flight and not have to disturb anyone. He again insisted that he needed to be able to sit with his wife and child, and I suggested they speak to the flight attendant about moving seats. The F.A. obviously didn't have much of a solution for them, so they spent the entire flight leaning across me to talk to one another, passing drinks and snacks across my lap, blocking my laptop screen, and getting up and down frequently to make me suffer. Fine, whatever, doesn't bother me. However, when there started to be a frequency of elbows to my baby bump during their discussions, I let the F.A. know what was going on, and they were told to stop reaching across me. My husband says I was entitled in playing the pregnancy card. Is he right? Turn the tables on my ex-wife's attempt to make me back out last minute from coaching children's t-ball, about a year out from divorce. Ex-wife has been acting petty and childish, to say the least. Tries to make me look bad any attempt she gets. My young son played t-ball last year, and I volunteered to be the coach. Really enjoyed it. But my work responsibilities schedule changed before this season, and I simply could not commit to do it again. I became good friends with the guy running the league and let him know before the signups even started as a heads up. 
was disappointed, but not much to do. What I was able to do was volunteer to get to the field super early Saturday before the game started to set them up. Chalk line the batter's boxes, foul lines, put out bases, etc., three fields total, which he was extremely grateful for. A few weeks before the season was supposed to start, they were unfortunately short a couple coaches and were sending out some desperation emails to all of the parents. My ex knew my situation and apparently thought going onto the website and basically fraudulently volunteering me to coach would be a great way to inconvenience me, make me look bad by having to back out, etc. So she did just that. Buddy running the league called me very confused. In order to register, you have to make a username, password. Username is just your email. So after a few minutes of looking through the registration, we worked what happened as her email was in the account name. Ultimately, he decided to put his kid on my son's team and be the coach on top of everything else he was doing. He was pissed at my ex himself, though, because this stunt could have set them back finding a legit coach if they needed to, possibly delaying the league. Here is where I come up with the petty revenge. He sends out the official email out to all of the parents of the league with the rosters and coaches for all 10 teams. Except for our kids' team, instead of listing himself, I tell him to list my ex, puts her name, contact info, etc., and says to expect further info from each coach individually. She emails him back once she notices to point out the mistake, saying it should have been me instead. But he ignores it. He sends her all of the clearances coaches need to pass, asks for time she can come, pick up equipment, the whole nine yards. After a couple of days, parents of the team apparently start emailing her, asking for info on when the season starts and when practice will be and all that. Eventually, he does reply back, playing dumb, telling her she is the one who volunteered, as it was her username that registered, and knew it wasn't supposed to be me as he had spoken to me months earlier and knew I wasn't able to do it this year. Put her in an awkward spot because she either had to admit what she did or feign some BS ignorance and claim a miscommunication, which everyone knew was nonsense as we were divorced. After she flat out says she can't coach and she isn't sure what to tell him, he sends out another email to the entire league, which says due to the coach of our kids team name, backing out at the very last minute, I have no choice but to take on coaching the team myself on top of the rest of the responsibilities. Moving forward, we ask that coaches do not volunteer unless they plan on fulfilling that commitment. He didn't mention her by name, but everyone saw the rosters and knew he was talking about her. She texted me a few weeks later once the season started about how my buddy is an a-hole for doing that to her due to a glitch in the registration software as multiple people have approached and asked her not so nicely what happened and she knows she is getting looks from people during the games. What a satisfying text it was to receive.